Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. Today is Thursday, March the 14th, 2024. We have a fantastic show for you because we have a lot to talk about. We've got some questions from the corner here to discuss it all with me to answer your questions. Mr. Allen Head. Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole Pinkston. How about you, fellas? How about you? How about you, big dog? We are up to $10.50 in the J-Head jar. <laughs> we are. There is an update to that now. $10.50. $10.50. Okay. Hey, uh, we, we do have a lot to talk about. We're going to get to it all as soon as possible. Before we do, Auburn Opelika, Lee County, if you're looking for a home in that area, look no further for the help you need. I promise you, folks, you will not be disappointed. Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group. Find a house for you. Sell the house for you. She's a... No, she's, she is the five-star realtor, folks. God, great day. I'm telling you, when people are learning, I, 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 she is fantastic. Today, uh, she's just been killing it. Fantastic. Get Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. 334-704-4442. Tell her we sent you. Okay, let's get to a couple of the breaking news. Uh, a couple of the breaking news bits that we've experienced in the past few days since Antonio Coleman decommitted from Auburn a couple of weeks ago. Auburn has since lost another commitment, another defensive line commitment. So they had four. Now they're down to two. Uh, Kalen Edwards, the three, four star from Tennessee, announced his decommitment. Is it Tuesday night? Yes. Yeah. T Tuesday night from Auburn. And I will say this. When Vontrell King Williams took over for Jeremy Garrett, when he was hired as his replacement, uh, went to fill out the defensive line commitments, and he was he, he avoided me, and that's very unlike Kalen Edwards. If you if you've ever talked to him or met him, right? And I was like, hmm. So I was not surprised. I was surprised, and Auburn was too. They really like this kid, but uh, that's two um, defensive linemen that Auburn has lost since Jeremy Garrett left and went to the NFL. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Auburn also lost one of its top targets, a wide receiver, and Derek Smith. They didn't lose him. Alabama now leads for Derek Smith. There you go. He uh, he committed to Alabama. I think Monday. Yes, Monday night or Monday afternoon. I think actually. Uh, um, as, as we've been saying these days, like I said, Alabama now leads for him. I expect him to be in Auburn again soon. We'll see uh, how that goes. Wouldn't be surprised to see Antonio Coleman in Auburn again soon. Uh, no, uh, neither one of those guys, Auburn, is not giving up on. And again, it's March. We're still what nine months. We're, we're we're nine months away from signing day. Not well, and depending on when signing day will be, now it'll probably you know, be it, like it, December first or something. That'll no, eight and a half months. I, I was going to say, I think it's going to be the second. I think they decided to first table. Wednesday. Yeah. First Wednesday of December is when it's going to be. I go. think they, they tabled the June or July signing day, and they're going to vote on it at a date to be named later. But I do believe that they are in the process of moving up to December. I don't know if that's been officially named, done right. just yet or not. It, it's still in the works, but it's it's more likely than not at this point. Uh, moving on, the visits, Auburn resumed spring practice this week, and will continue to until a day on April the 6th. Already, Auburn's had some big-time recruits on campus. Tuesday, five-star offensive tackle, uh, and Andrew Babalola. Mm -hmm. Andrew Babalola and uh, the wide receiver. Who was the wide receiver? C.J. Uh, C. C. Wiley. Wiley. That's what I said. C.J. Wiley. Cole, you talked to both of those guys. Yeah. And there were some other guys there. Ryan G. was there. I think well, – did Hollis Davidson come in? Yep, yep. They were Hollis together. Hollis Davidson there. Tristan Lyles was there from Phoenix City. Yeah. And um, so there was a couple of guys, but some the two the two top dogs, C.J. Wiley, Andrew Babalo, Cole, you talked to both of those guys. Uh, give us a little uh, recap on those and maybe your thoughts on each. Yeah. Um, C.J. Wiley, first of all, I didn't realize his dad played for LSU. Um, he was there with him. Uh, Two-time All-SEC player at LSU, I believe. Really? I can't think of his first Wiley. name right now. Hmm. Wiley's his last name. Um, anyway, he so he is an LSU legacy. Um, Auburn's Auburn likes him a lot. Of course, he's teammates with Ryan G. And they weren't really together. Ryan Chuck was actually Wiley. with yeah Chuck Wiley. That's correct. Um, Ryan G. and CJ Wiley didn't really come in together. Ryan G. was more so with Hollis Davidson, 
dude, the tight ends that were on campus just on that first day. 2026 got, guys, too. You got the number four tight end in the country was also there. Um, Sneed was his last name. Carson CJ? Sneed. That's what I said. Carson. I mean, that guy was there. You had a couple other guys, too. So, Ben A, I see you. Ben, ben Agamawa getting after it. He, 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 oh, and guess what? Agamoa. Yeah, Agamoa. Hmm. I was going to say me that? Uh, Maurice, on our interview last week, Maurice oh, Harris, he, you know, yeah. they coached uh, together a lot. They're good buddies. And uh, I was like, yeah, Ben, yeah, ben uh, Agamoa. I was like, oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> I mean, that's what I've been saying. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> me too. That's what I said. All, all the time. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I'll just be the one person to fess up on this show saying I messed his name up like 10 times, dude. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know I have. I know I have. God but bless you, BNI. Yeah, he deserves a mention because he's bringing in the dudes right now. For and sure. if you look at the visitors list, which we're going to take a look at at some point. So that hit me in there on that. Big tight ends lined up all through March, dude. And, and we're talking about for the 2025 class. So, again, yeah, Carson Sneed. You got right there. That was the guy. He's the top 100 guy for the next class. Corbin Fordham is another oh, one. It's too big. Um, Carson Sneed. Yeah, th these were the Tuesday's visitors from the 2026 class that we that we documented. Those three guys, and then let's go up in the 2025 class. Because I want to get to that Saturday list, dude. And Thursday, hey, Thursday's not going to be a uh, – there's just gonna have a couple of guys. Every practice, like we said earlier, is gonna have a couple of guys. But yeah. uh, there you go, Andrew Babalola, C.J. Wiley. Yep. Keep going, yep. Cole. I'm sorry. C.J. Wiley, you know, not a big talker. Uh, seemed like he enjoyed it. Said he wants to return. Official visits on the table. You know, obviously LSU is going to be in there. Georgia's in there. Alabama's in there. He's a big time guy. Um, that was a big, somewhat of a surprise seeing him there. But of course, we knew he would visit with Ryan G at some point, being his teammate. Um, but Marcus Davis loves this guy. I found out that he really, really does. I mean, they're pushing for this guy. So he's one to keep, um, you know, in mind as we keep going here. And then the big dog is Andrew Babalola, mm. who came mm. in from mm. Kansas. He is legit. Um, lean kind of guy, really not that that big yet, but his frame is unreal. I mean, he's got the perfect offensive tackle frame. Um, I think Auburn really knocked it out of the park with him, man. I, I think that they really, you know, they had a lot of things there that, that that made sense. Like his brother goes to Tuskegee. That was one thing that we found out. So he's got some familiarity there. His brother was with him. We, you know, his brother actually had been on campus before. It, this was not his first time. So he he had an idea of what he was walking into. But he kept talking about his relationships with with Jake Thornton. And that seems to be a big deal here. Uh, Nebraska, Kansas State, Michigan. He's got – I think he's going to have like a top eight or something coming soon. Auburn's going to be in it. I expect Auburn to get an official visit. I think Auburn's way up there for him, especially you after think top, top half. Doing. You think top half of that of, of a top eight? Yeah, I think top three or four. I think okay. Auburn's in there. Okay, that's that's good to hear. Uh, let's look ahead real quick, real quick before we get to questions from the corner. This is Saturday's list. Let me look at Thursday's list. I updated this earlier on Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, Mal Waldrop's coming over from Phoenix City Central. Dalen Upshaw's coming over. TK Norman, big dog, coming in yeah. from uh, Montgomery. Tristan Williams is the guy, uh, a little younger guy. He's And, and then the uh, 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 quarterback from – who can spin it? He's the Troy yeah. UAB type <laughs> quarterback. He's Pretty really good. good. So is Tristan Williams. He's just 5'9 and, you know, one, 195, I think. Uh, but but Cole Thursday, you like TK New Norman? Yeah, I went and saw him at Madhouse. Um, man, it seems like forever since I've been on a show with you guys. First of all, I missed the call in show. Yeah, that's what Swifties um, do, you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I had to go see old old T Swift, hoping I'd see Travis Kelsey, but that didn't happen. And his two band aids. Mm. <laughs> I didn't go see Taylor Swift. Just for the record, I got it. I yeah, I tried to stay with that. the joke. I can't stay with it. Uh, anyway, I went, to, I went to see Tristan, um, at Madhouse in Montgomery where he trains, saw Malik blocked in there well, while he was on spring break, getting after it a little bit. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I think Tristan Norman, if I were wants him, I think they got him personally. He a slot guy. Uh, um, yeah, I think probably, but he's, he's fast. 
I mean, he's a guy that you can line up in some in some different places. I think he's bigger than that listed size. Okay, I'd give him I'd give him maybe one sixty five, pushing six foot. I think that's about his height. Uh, this guy's got a frame though. I think he can really build on you know one eighty, one eighty five, one ninety in the future. I think he's his best football is way ahead of him. So this is a guy that maybe in last year's class when you're trying to make a splash with receiver, maybe they didn't offer this guy, especially when they knew they had a good chance with Perry Thompson, Cam Coleman. But this year is a little different. I think building on that receiver's class, uh, receiver room, Tristan Norman would be a great addition, in my opinion, because of his 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 tools. I mean, he's got a lot of tools. Still learning the game, but tools are, are very good. I agree, Cole. I mean, I think a, a kid like him makes a lot of sense in this class, a lot of raw ability when you watch him on tape. I mean, you can see the natural skill set that he's got, the traits that translate to the college level. Uh, like you said, his best football is probably ahead of him, but you just took four big-time guys. I mean, we talked yeah. about it on this show several times. Four top 200 players, not wide receivers, players in the country that you happen to land at the wide receiver position. So to take a developmental guy, in the next year's class makes a lot of sense to me. And who knows? This time last year, Bryce Kane was completely unranked, had played more baseball than he had football at this point. And you saw where he ended up in the final rankings. Yeah. Really liked what I saw from Tristan T.K. Norman. I got another sleeper that I'm going to mention. I think that we got a wide receiver question in our, uh, in our mailbag grab. So I'm not going to throw it out right now, but I think he's another stock up guy on Auburn's board as well. So, But I love T uh, Tristan T.K. Norman. I, I think he's – I think he's an ideal fit for this class. And and I know that there's some people that would prefer, say, maybe a Dalen Upshaw, some people on our board. I, I think Tristan T.K. Norman's a better player. I, huh. I firmly believe that right I now. I wonder if those two are vying for the same spot. I don't know. Are they similar? I think uh, – similar, you know, similar build? N- D- Dalen's smaller. I think he's only about 5'9". Well, I probably. would say looking at both of them – I think Tristan might have just a an inch on him as far as height. Okay. But Upshaw is filled out a lot more. He's he looks almost okay. running back like. By the way, he was actually at practice Tuesday. He's going to be back Thursday. Apparently, he slipped in Tuesday. So two quick visits there. For him, uh, let's look real quick. Uh, Saturday, man, this is like a big cat junior coming up. Uh, Saturday, Auburn's going to probably. I'm guessing they're going to be inside the stadium. They're going to have a large group of recruits there, 2025, 2026s. There'll probably be some 2027s uh, there as well. Uh, but just look at this 2025 guy, uh, 25 list. You've got uh, five-star quarterback Julian Lewis, four-star edge Zion Grady, four-star linebacker uh, Jaden Perlotti is coming back. Andrew Maddox is coming over from Mississippi. That's a big one. A uh, couple of big offensive linemen, in-state, out-of-state offensive linemen. Uh, Cole broke the news, Broderick Schultz coming in from Oklahoma. Um what is he? Is the uh, he's a top one one thirty player? Hey, for on three, he's the number eighteen overall player in the country. Oh, he's a potential five star. Then he is. There you go, number one player in Oklahoma, number eighteen overall player in the country. Uh, wow, that's we, big. We didn't know much about him because he does not post his offers. You can go to his Twitter; you won't find any offers. Huh. Instagram, none of it. Doesn't post it. Doesn't seem to be too big into it. Uh, but he he likes Auburn, so. We'll see where that wow. goes. I don't know yet. Uh, I need to talk to him. Need to get in front of him. You know, see how it goes. But that's going to be interesting. Well, just look at the offensive linemen: Shoal, Cortez, Smith, Juan Gaston's coming over from Atlanta. Jordan Crawford's defensive lineman. He's coming right. down. Him and Malik both will be on. Listen, at, at this point, e- even before you had a couple of decommitments on the defensive line, anytime you get Jordan Crawford on campus, it is a huge deal. You got to keep that guy. He's le- he is legit. No, I, I agree. I mean, I think him, Malik Altry, and Ja'Kayla Falk are your top three players in this class right now. And I thought that they were the top three players in your class before you had three different D commitments. Well, I guess one flip and two D commitments. Right. So, it, it to me, it's pivotal. Those are your building block guys in this class. Those are the guys you want to build the back of this class off of. Um, and you got to keep all three of those, in my honest opinion. Get For Jordan sure. Crawford, Malik Autry on campus. The two defensive linemen left. Then you're getting Andrew Maddox on campus as well. I think that's huge. Uh, and then the 2026 class, they've got a great group of 2026 is coming in as well on Saturday. Uh, Tyler Atkinson, I think he's a five-star. He will be a Hezekiah Harris, big-time in-state kid. Bryce Perry Wright is a top dog in the yeah. 2026 class. 
Uh, there's your boy, Zaylas Hicks, is coming in. Dia Bell, quarterback from Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Dylan Beal, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with him. Uh, let's see who else we've got in here. Somebody else. James, James Morrow is a big one. He was a good performer at the um, okay. Under Armour from Buford there. Vodney Cleveland. Yeah, Vodney's a oh, big Deuce, dog. I forgot about Deuce Geralds. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Tyler Atkinson. Here, uh-huh. here are my top three guys from the Under Armour camp. Tyler Atkinson. Tavares Dice and Deuce Geralds. Deuce Geralds really? was a dude there. I really liked that guy. So, so like from Collins Hill. I tell you what, yeah. um, you know, Chris Uwald, was he on that? I think he wasn't on that list. I just looked at No, I think 20th. he's the next weekend. Well, I, he, I think he's coming in this weekend. I think he's been pushed up. Daenerys Gray is coming in. He's coming okay. with Chris Uwald, and I think – I'm not ready to report this, but I think that wide receiver who's committed to Miami also will be. Oh, yeah. Wade and Charles. Wade and Charles, who we've been saying since last year to keep an eye on. So, uh, yes, according uh, according to one guy, Daenerys Grace coming up. He's bringing Chris Uwald and um, Wade and Charles. Uh, uh, Kale, Kale Ellis? Kyle. Yeah, Kale. Yeah. Kale. Kale, another, Kale, Kale. another top performer from Under Armour Camp. Okay. Hey, but this Vodney Cleveland's uh, Auburn loves this guy. Yeah, Vodney. He's um, I went and saw him at Prattville. Shout out to the uh, the Lions there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at look at you. <laughs> went and saw him at Prattville the other day. He's a big kid, man. He is he is an SEC defensive lineman. He's got it written all over him, and uh, he he loves some Auburn. His uncle played for Auburn. Don Page in the nineties was his uncle was the outside linebacker for Auburn, so a legacy recruit. Uh, Auburn's very, very high on him. I, I, I know that Vontrell King Williams thinks he's the top guy for the next class. So there's 14 confirmed from the 2026 class, and, and you know those are. It's going to be more than that in the 2025. I, I'm expecting at least 30 yeah, visitors on Saturday. It's 12 from 20. Big cat like, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's 26 that I've got on the on the list. And like I said, I think I'm going to add Chris Ewald. I'm going to check on that. I'm going to make sure uh, my dates are right on that because I know Daenerys Gray's coming in and Chris Ewald is supposed to be coming with him. So we're looking at a 30-plus recruit visit day on Saturday. <clears throat> uh, big, big day. Big, big day. Um, all right, well, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's get to some questions from the corner. <laughs> Hendo, leading us off. Big dog Hendo. Any idea on what the D line board looks like now with losing two recruits? It's a great question. Uh, do we? Do you think we stay after those guys, or do we move on to the new recruits? Definitely staying after these guys. Ste- definitely yeah. staying after Antonio Coleman. Definitely staying after Kalen Edwards. I, again, I wouldn't I'm, be surprised if Kalen Edwards. He to me he is the um, if you remember William Eccles from the last class end up signing with Ole Miss he, he got a big, lace. yeah it was spelled like that he he got a big bump at the end of the year I think he's top two hundred player for on three at the end but he was a yeah. guy that could play offensive line or defensive line and it really you know it could go either way I I think Kalen Edwards is that guy in this class so does Auburn look at him on the offensive line I don't know I think they do like him though. Uh, let me let me uh, let me see real quick the other defense line. We know some of the um, some of the top guys. I had that top five. Yeah, and one of them from that list stands out to me. And obviously, uh, Andrew Maddox was on that list for you. Yeah, but Nathaniel one, Marshall, Elijah Griffin, Myron Charles, Justice Terry, all those guys are studs. You just named the one that stands out to me, Nathaniel Marshall. Okay, if anybody knows anything about VKW, you know he's originally from Illinois. A lot of contacts in the Midwest. He had, in fact, actually played college football at Illinois before going to JUCO and ended up at UTSA. A lot of – I mean, there's just – kid. people typically recruit where they're from or where they have contacts. I'm going to watch that one. I don't have any intel right now that this kid's leaning Auburn by any means. I think he's going to visit Auburn. I think he's visited Auburn in the past. Something makes me think we may be in the mix there a little bit more than some people think. Um, I, I, that's just a gut reaction right now, but Von Trell's going to cook. I, 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 I have a good feeling that Von Trell King Williams is going to land somebody in this class. It's going to turn somebody's head. I, I just, I think it's coming. 
I like it. Yeah, I think Marshall was at a game this season. I can't remember which one it was, but I remember seeing his name tag and going, man, that guy's like 6'5". And he was a young guy at the time, but yeah. All right, good stuff, Hendo. Appreciate you, big dog. Don't work too hard. Cliffs Dwellers, 91. I see J.J. Falk is considering an Alabama OV. How solid would you say his commitment is at the moment? Man, if if I had to – I – I think he, I, there's, I don't think, I think there's this. Uh, I don't even know if there's a chance to flip him. I'm going to be honest. I don't. It's a weird deal, right? It, it's, it's, it's just like, so I put in a prediction for Andrew Maddox to land with Auburn and his brother goes to Ole Miss and just committed and signed with Ole Miss. Yeah. So it can happen. Now, I'm not saying Andrew Maddox is going to up and sign with Auburn right now. I think, you know, they have a shot with him. I think that might be your guy that Vontro King Williams gets. It seems like he could be a candidate for that. But as far as not playing with your brother, it's happened before. It wouldn't be the first time. I think Alabama's always been there for him. He's told me that in person. JJ Falk has. And he, you know, he even I've seen him on Twitter go, you know, I'm not going to Auburn just because my brother. I've seen him actually answer people and say that. He said, I'm going to Auburn because they make me feel like family. And I don't know if that's going to change. Does somebody else, tr- you know, trump that? I don't know. I, I, I feel like Auburn's got him, if that makes sense. But I am and watching so that. close, man. Like, I don't know how Andrew and Anthony are. I, I know. I saw. I know when, when Keldrick Falk drives to yeah. Birmingham and is in the stands cheering on his brother in the state tournament, state championship basketball game when – they're they're very close. They're uh, so I, I personally, Alan, would be shocked, not surprised. I would be shocked. I would too. If if JJ Falk signs anyway, I don't care where he goes. I don't care if he goes to Alabama six times for six games this year and an OV the weekend before signing day. I still like Auburn's chances in the end if everything's. And I think Keldrick's going to be a star in Auburn. No, I don't did. disagree. It, it's hard to imagine him going someplace else. I think we saw it with the Osbury brothers, though, where obviously yep. Austin There's came here. One. His brother went to Notre Dame. So it, it's not out of the realm of possibility for it to happen, but I'm with you. I, I think J. Caleb Falk is somebody that committed to Auburn because he truly likes Auburn. I, well, I think Osbury, though, was under Harson. He was very unhappy. He was probably telling his brother, do not come here. Potentially, and and I don't have that info, so I don't know. It just was throwing it out as kind of a devil's advocate to it. I hear you, but yeah, it's it's hard for me to imagine, and it, it it's probably unsettling for the people on our board to hear an Auburn commit thinking about taking an official visit to Alabama. That's probably the biggest part for people to you know the hardest part for people to wrap their mind around. <clears throat> but again. These are kids. They want to take visits. They want to do different things. At the end of the day, I think J. Caleb Falk signs with Auburn. Josh Aldridge has done a phenomenal job recruiting yes. him. I think he's going to continue to do a great job. The hardest thing for me is, and I think Cole and I are of the opinion, that he's going to be an edge now. I think that's kind of mm-hmm. how yeah. we see him as a as a buck. But – I haven't heard that from his mouth yet in an interview. Are they still recruiting him to play linebacker? Are they recruiting him to play buck? So that's going to be interesting to me to see how that piece of his recruitment re- evolves. And and also, if if the goal in year one for Hugh Freeze was to flip the script, as was the you know the quote that he kept having, nothing flips the script more than hey, it's it's an Auburn commit taking an OV to Alabama because it's usually the other way around. I mean, almost always. And and it's Auburn trying to get a guy from Alabama. Well, if that, if that Auburn commit takes an official visit to Alabama, he typically has not stayed with Auburn very long shortly thereafter. I put it like yeah. that. Now, a true flip of the script would be shutting the door on him again, which he did in year one. You got to do it again, though. You also have to remember in this day and age, you get thousands of dollars in your pocket to go on these visits just to take them. Some on the table, some off the table. <laughs> and it, it, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I just don't see. Cole, I thought you bring up, brought up a great point, but you think back to last year, Auburn really didn't have any commitments at this time that Alabama wanted. 
No. Walker White would have been the only one, I would think. And I don't they think had, they were recruiting him, was he? They, no, they, they had Julian Sane in, mm-hmm. in the boat at that time. I mean, let's oh. just think back to any time. When was Auburn holding on to these commitments in March and other people are coming in trying to get them and they got to hold on? It's different. We're used to Auburn being the school that's going in trying to take trying others' to commitments. Mm-hmm. It's just different for this time of year. Yeah, golly. Uh, but but people freaking out, man. I don't know if they just haven't followed recruiting very long. Like, uh, I, I don't I don't understand it. Like, I was like, we're we're not doing a very good job of educating on some of these people. Well, I don't even think it's that, Jeffrey. I just think sometimes in today's media cycle, when people consistently see you know re- commitments to the the other team in the state or other schools in the southeast, and Auburn's not having that same perpetual motion of getting constant commitments and buzz. I think it, there's just a certain level of anxiety because of how uneven Auburn's playing has been on the field the last four years. I mean, you you think about it. It's been mediocre at best, right? I mean, several six and six performances and a five and seven mixed in there. And so people are just naturally uneasy and recruiting that Hugh Freeze brought last year is the one thing they can hang their hat on, right? That's the one yeah. thing they can say, you know what? Auburn's recruiting at a high clip. And when that's – feels as though that's kind of in jeopardy. I think there's just some anxiety there. But my guess is, and I think, Cole, you're prepared to talk about it. Auburn's about to go on a run here, man. I mean, I, I, they're getting a lot of kids in town. I think they're, they are really recruiting the right way. And it's going to pay off. It's just not – I don't think this is commit season right now. I think this is the lead into commit season. You're going to have – a lot of unofficial visits. You're going to have a big transfer portal cycle, and then you're going to have official visit season in June, followed by a ton of commitments at the end of June, <clears throat> beginning of July. That's just kind of the cycle of the way things go. Uh, yeah. Before we move on, JJ Falk, as Zach in the back duly noted in our private chat, he also has official visits set to Florida State and Florida and Alabama. So chill. Don't get too high. <laughs> Don't get too low. It's March. <laughs> just chill. Be gone. Cheers. So long as he's also got one to set to Auburn, we're good to go. Sure, right. He's probably been to Auburn seven times that we didn't know about in the last three weeks. <laughs> uh, Aub LM, if we go seven and five this year, along with a slight improvement in office performance from last year, where do you think the 2025 class lands? Could we have a re- repeat of a, a top 10 class? I absolutely expect a top 10 class. I think we said six to nine. With yeah, a ce- with a ceiling, a crazy ceiling of four. I think yeah. it could dip as low as twelve. If I'm being honest, I think it would be a disappointment for me. I think it would, depending on the pieces. For me, like it, it depends on how you fill this class out. If you really hit a home run in the offensive line, the defensive line class, which I think are the biggest needs in this upcoming class, I'm okay if you finish top twelve. It's like seven or eight in the SEC. It is. It, it, and it feels like you're losing ground, right? But, again, it depends on if your nails on your evals, too. So some of that can flesh itself out. So I'm okay if it goes to 12. It's not ideal, I don't think, by any means. Uh, specifically, if you're looking at it from a perception standpoint. But I think it could vary in that range. I do, depending on – like. What does that seven and twelve look like? Do you get a big victory that gives you some momentum off the field, or is it just you win seven games that you're supposed to win? I will say this: I'm looking at it in a broad, with a broad stroke. The 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 new additions when it comes to recruiting, I feel like, believe it or not, dude, I I feel like they were upgrades. I really do. I feel like Charles. I mean, as as good as Cadillac was, as good as Zach was, as good Damn. as Trevon was. There's different elements to recruiting, and I believe these guys coming in, that the network they have is much bigger than these younger guys that Auburn had before. Uh, Charles Kelly, huge network across the southeast. Uh, even adding guys, Derek Nix, you know, yeah. a guy who's got <clears throat> footprints in several different states in the southeast. Derek Nix. Uh, Charles Kelly, and then you then you add in the uh, the, the the off the field personnel. Will Redman, uh, 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 Maurice Harris, Kenyatta Watson, Kenyatta Watson. I mean, th- these were these are blue chip recruiting guys. Oh, I agree, one hundred percent. I think sometimes to me it's just different in recruiting in year two versus year one. 
in year one, it's so easy to sell hope and, and to have everybody on the same page. And you've got that constant new coach smell and buzz. And in year two, if you're really not taking off on the field, sometimes there's a natural mm-hmm. backslide in recruiting somewhat. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to get good players. It just means you have to be that much more cautious about who you take in your class and making sure that they can play. If Auburn takes a big jump of like nine wins, I would absolutely expect top eight type class. Like there's no question in my mind if Auburn takes off that way on the field. If it's seven wins and it's not like a – not a big victory in there, I can see where you slide, you know, somewhere between six to 12. Mm. I think uh, I, I like that, Jay, uh, Alan. You good, man. We're up to eleven fifty. We're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my tips, baby. <laughs> Tigers unlimited. Who do we have the best shot with out of the Shoal kid from Oklahoma, Josh Petty, uh, from Savannah, Atlanta? Mm, yeah, somewhere in there. Babalolo. There you go. Look at Zach in the back trying to show out. Roswell. That's what I said. <laughs> Not just where a UFO was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, best shot with Shoal, the, the the potential five-star from Oklahoma. Josh Petty, the five-star from Georgia. And Babalola, the five-star from Kansas. Right now, oh, it's I think Babalola. Talk, probably talked to all these three. It, it's Babalola right now is, is my pick. I agree. I, it, it, and the reason is because of what we were just talking about. I think that Hugh Freeze and, and even the new staff – even a guy like Charles Kelly, because he's he's kind of an old school guy. Weston McGriff, kind of an old school guy. I think when they get them in person, they got as good a chance as anyone with these guys, especially if they get them in person several times. I really believe that. So, yeah, it feels like Auburn doesn't have a lot of momentum right now with guys, but wait until this weekend. It's, I'm telling you, there's going to be momentum coming out of this weekend. When they get face to face with these guys, they're gonna have a shot. They they are good at that, and the guys they got brought in are good at it too. So Babalo is the one that's made it there. Um, I've heard great things about what how that visit went. And he's gonna be back, I think, for an official visit. So I'd say him. I like it. Man, it, it, one of those three, huge. Oh yeah, yeah Frank. I mean, wow. I'm sorry, Alan. No, you're good. I was just going to say those are all – those are guys, NFL upside type offensive tackles. Yes. Yeah. Frank, wah, deuce, deuce. How do you see the quarterback and wide receiver board shaking out uh, this spring? Any leans, any long, current long shots? Well, let's think about the wide receivers. Julian Lewis is coming in Saturday. Uh, the kid from California is coming in. Uh, Hussain, yep. Hussain, Hussain Longstreet. Who's on yep. Longstreet? That's a big one. That's another one, just like we just said. Let's see what happens when they get him on campus. If I'm handicapping, I think your best shot's probably with Cutter Woods. I think who they have, they have their eyes on it, as of today. But what happens when they get who's on Longstreet on campus? How does that change the calculus to a degree? And do they continue to stay in it with Juju Lewis? Do they, you know, it, I think it's, I think from a national standpoint, most people are predicting for him to flip to Georgia, right? Like that, I think that's kind of the word amongst people that are tied in on the national circuit. But Hugh Freeze isn't going to get played here either. So how long does he stay in this one? And if he thinks he's really in it, then who knows? You know what I mean? Who am I to say that he's not actually in it? So, That'll be interesting. I think it's going to come from one of those three. Maybe K.J. Lacey's still involved somewhat. I know Texas has done a really good job on recruiting him and keeping him in their class to this point, though Auburn thinks highly of him. And I'm not sure where we are on T.J. Latif. I just yeah, – it, it, it feels like that one's trending Nebraska. What do you think, Cole? I think he's a little further back on the board than I once thought. And I actually thought Longstreet was a little further back and Latif was higher but it's actually the opposite I have learned. So Latif probably going to Nebraska, but I don't think it's because Auburn just doesn't like him at all. I think Auburn does like him, but they love Hassan Longstreet. Right. I did not realize how much they love Hassan Longstreet. Knowing that they love him so much, I really do think that will be the guy. And 
they're gonna they're gonna push on Julian Lewis. Don't get me wrong. But something about talking to Hussein Longstreet just for me personally made me believe Auburn has a legitimate shot here, even though Texas A and M is the trending team. And I think that Auburn thinks the same thing. You're, You're muted, Jeffrey. Muted. <laughs> yeah, I was cussing. <laughs> and did we get on the wide receiver board? Wide receiver I, board. As far as leans, I would say Tristan Norman, probably a lean. If they start to push, I think Auburn's going to have a great shot. Caleb Cunningham Other will be that. on campus again soon. Derek Smith will be back on campus again soon. C.J. Wiley. C.J. Wiley. Travis Smith. Campus. Will be on March twenty third. Long Street will be at Auburn March twenty third. Yep. I got one name for you guys that I'm tracking. Tyler Williams, recent offer, state of yes. Florida. He is a stock up guy for sure. Um, so if, if for those of you that uh, that get into to huddle highlights and and like to watch the tape. Yeah, he's a guy on the rise. Take a peek at Tyler Williams. I think he's, uh, and I think he's absolutely coming up Auburn sport too. Yeah, he's from legit. Sumner High School in I don't remember Riverview. where. Anymore. Yeah, yep, orig- originally out of Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, that's right. He's I talked to him Birmingham. on the phone. Yes, sir. Hmm. I talked to him on the phone a couple, about a month ago. He's interested. He's got a lot of new offers flooding in, so. I'm not sure where his mind is yet with Auburn, but I think he'll visit soon. Jimmy Sexton. I feel like he owes me a lot of money. <clears throat> <laughs> how big of a high school class do you expect? How, how big, uh, big of a high school class, Mr. Allen? You're a good numbers guy, 22-ish. In this class, it's going to depend on the quality to me. So you're probably – 20, 20 plus. Like that's that's kind of the number I'm going with right now. I just don't know. We'll get a better feel for the numbers as we get a little bit deeper into the recruiting season. I think by July I'll have a good feel for the total number in the class. But not knowing where we stand with certain guys right now, because this staff is not going to reach. Like they just refuse to absolutely do it. They're going to take kids that they feel solid about, that they feel comfortable with. Now they're going to meet needs and fill holes. But I think – 20 plus is a good number. And then as we get a little bit deeper, say July, August ish, I think we can probably pinpoint it in a little bit more at say 22, 23, 24, something like that. This early is always safe to say between 20 and 25, 22 sounds good as any. Um, yeah, between 20 and 25. And then you pick a number. You know what I mean? Yeah, like right. that, that, that's kind of where it's at. Uh, let's see. LA Whip, uh, CJ May, fantastic edge player from Highland Home. <laughs> teammate and very close friend of J.J. Falk. Is he a take? And if so, where do we stand with him? I don't think – I think we thought – we think if he was a take, he would be in this class by now. Yeah, I don't I don't think he would have even committed to Notre Dame if he were a take. That doesn't mean he won't be right. a take at some point. Look, we still got a whole senior season to go. Got a camp we season. Got, we still got camp season, mm-hmm. which is where a lot of that eval takes place. When they actually get them in front of – they actually get to coach these guys. Yeah, right. They actually get to coach them. That's how that goes. And it's awesome. It's my favorite time of year, by the way, camp season. Um, CJ May will be there. He'll be there with JJ Falk like he was last year and the year before, probably. Do they look at him and go, he's got a lot of upside, which he does. That's why Notre Dame took him so early. We'll see. We have a spot for a developmental edge. Yeah, right. I mean, look, I, I think there's several edges above him right now. Right. Some of the guys that we've talked to, uh, but maybe he's not an edge. Maybe he's a D lineman, and and he's thick. He's, I think he thinks he's probably an edge, but right, his body probably lean, lends more toward being a hand on the ground guy. I agree, and I, I think he is an edge by the sense of he's a defensive end. But I think he's more in that Amaris Williams mold and not necessarily in that buck stand-up mold. Right. I mean, I think he's the other side of the ball. And he's what, six foot? He's a legitimate six five, six four. Oh, he's pretty. Yeah, he's pretty. Yeah, he, he looks the part, <laughs> 100%. 225, 230-plus right now. You put him in a strength and conditioning program, 
I honestly believe that's where his body's going to carry him anyway. Like they, I don't think he could stay in the buck room even if they took him at that position. But his athleticism, to me, definitely translates better at defensive end than it does at the uh, at the outside linebacker stand up edge position. Right. Shannon's, Shannon S. Uh, Hugh Freeze and company have been able to get plenty of stars to visit. When will these visits produce commitments? At what point should this become concerning? Should never become concerning. Uh, well, we talked about it. This is visit season. Yes, this is visit season. I mean, it's, are you going to get a commitment or two sure. between now and then? Yeah, I think you're going to have a couple of trickle in for sure. But a, kids are getting hammered right now. And I want you guys to talk about this because you talk to them more than I do. I mean, a lot more. But <laughs> they are getting hammered by every school right now to visit. Don't commit someplace. Visit. Come see us. Come visit us. Go to Miami, go to Florida State, go to Texas. They get pulled in like 8,000 different directions. And then it's the OV season, not just the unofficial visit season. Now you're in OV season. June. Right. And so now you're talking June, July-ish before a lot of these kids make decisions. I mean, think about the role we went on this time last year, starting in about the end of June. Yes. When you had Barbara commit. Uh, who's the cornerback out of Atlanta? Cole, you had his Crawford. Crawford committed. Blockton. Uh, Blockton committed. So you had those three in the in, in the boat. Then you had uh the slot receiver out of Mobile. Yeah. Bryce Kane. Bryce Kane jumped into the boat. And then obviously Perry and Demarcus to cap it all off. I mean, you went on the and, run. And Malcolm about, Simmons. Malcolm, Malcolm Simmons. Simmons. So you went on the run of about eight commitments right there in that month. And that's what I expect this month as well. Sure. The same and, July situation as well. In that same month. Cam Coleman committed to Texas A&M, Jamonte Waller to Florida, Amaris Williams to Florida. Correct. So you've they got unoffic Robert. unofficial visit season now through April, May. There's going to be June, the end of May and June is going to be your official visit season. June, the latter part of June and July, which is a dead period, will be your commitment season. You're going to have camps in that June se June month too. That's when Bryce Kane got his offer. That's when Malcolm Simmons that uh, was there in camp. Um, uh, that and then you're gonna have commitment season July before the senior season. Then you're gonna have flip watch season. Yes, and then you're gonna have flip season, and you're gonna have signing day. There's so many phases of recruiting that we have this, to go through right now. This question this by like phase one of six. This question by Channon S just further deepens my confusion with our message board, the corner, who I love dearly. I'm so confused by you guys because half of the board. Says, I don't. Who cares who they're, they're committed to now? It don't matter until signing day. And the other half says, Are we ever going to get any commits? So I don't know where everybody stands. I can't keep up with it. You know, I'm having trouble with that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't know who wants to hear what. I'm not sure on that yet. Well, it it was like I was saying earlier. It doesn't matter what we say. That they know what they're supposed to be getting, or they at least think they know what they're supposed to be getting. And it's this guy not committing to Alabama. And it's this guy not visiting here. And it's this guy not waiting until March 31st to make a commitment. We want him now. We need him now. Sure. No momentum. Again, <laughs> and I think the lack of patience comes from the fact that Auburn fans right now are hanging their hat on recruiting. They, specifically yeah, you're right. Are, you're exactly right. You know, yes. specifically the ones on our board. Yep. You know what I mean? It, point. It's a point of it's a point of pride, right? Sure. You know, they wanted to be able to for go to work. Yeah, Nick Saban's gone. Auburn's going to dominate in recruiting, and now it's yeah. more of what everybody else is going through, which is hey, it's just a it, there's a phase. Yeah, Alabama got a couple of commitments. All right, they still don't have the same number of commitments you have in your class. In, in a non-NIL world, I'm sure losing Nick Saban for Alabama would have been much bigger for Auburn, but that's not where we're at. We're in the NIL world, and Alabama's got a lot of NIL money to use, and they're going to be fine with that. I don't care who the head coach is. That's that's the world we're in now, and I know it sucks. It really does. I don't I don't like it either, but you know, it, with how the NIL thing works and how it, it's like you can't even predict where a guy's going to go because he might get a bigger offer the next day. 
Correct. Now, you know, the the benefit here is that Alabama's on the on, on the same playing field as everyone else now. Whereas yes. before they have Nick Saban, it's like, well, I've got all the same money from everywhere, but they got Nick Saban. I, right. I'm going over here or yeah, Georgia. That was, I've, that, was the, that was the Trump card. That was right? the edge. That's right. They don't have that, but they probably have more nil money uh, now. And think about what I just talked about, how easy it is to sell in year one of a new coach. Mm -hmm. And then you add to the fact that Kalen DeBoer is coming off of playing in a national championship game, and it's an attractive pitch. Like, sure. I, I think Auburn fans need to just be rational here for a second. Commitments are coming, okay? They 100% are. The staff has done a fantastic job of IDing their targets, their working relationships. NIL Foundation is there. OK, and Auburn has a solid reputation in that arena now at this point after going through a season underneath you freeze as far as fulfilling deals that they promise, because that is a problem with certain schools in the NIL sphere is making promises they can't keep and or promising NIL deals on credit. That's not OTV situation. So we're on good footing, guys. It's going to pay off. You just need to kind of stay with us for a little bit longer. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the process. And we'll get there, I promise. And and I want to say to our Auburn Live family that I, I'm with you guys. I know it's frustrating. It's, it's tough for us, too. We're trying to make predictions and all that. And it's, it's tough, guys. This time of year is tough because they are all being pushed to commit, and they're going to commit places that they don't sign with. It's going to happen. And you're getting money to commit. I mean, I, and all I'm, What I want to say is, look – I'm not hitting the panic button yet, but I certainly will join you and grab my pitchfork if I believe it has gone awry. I think I have done that with certain things, like the defensive line situation. I know I have said a few things about that on the board and on our shows. If I ever feel like, you know, I, like I said, I will grab my pitchfork with you, but it, it's not time for that. It's not no, time for that. Not yet. Good stuff. Well said, Mr. Pink. Uh, Thank you. A Byers, WD. This is a good question, man. I like this question. Uh, what recruits do we focus on to get this class back rolling? Alburn has had some uh, setbacks here. So, yeah. what, 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 speaking of momentum, how does Auburn get that momentum back? Well, they need to get some commitments. They need to get some of that momentum so that public perception, some positive public perception. Correct. And not just visits. I know, I know what you're thinking, Alan. It's one guy. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and say it. Tavares Dice. That's the guy. That's your momentum grabber right there. Especially since, you know, he he's come out and said, look, I got these other schools are trying to knock Auburn off that number one spot. Auburn can't lose one. that guy. I got another Auburn one. can't lose that guy. And I thought about this today. I saw uh, Eric Winters told 24-7 oh, he's going to yeah. announce his commitment at the end of April. And where does yep. everybody think he's going right now? Georgia. And I thought, man, it sounds a lot like Joe Phillips. It sure, sure does. Yeah. Yeah. But, every, I, but everybody's freaking out already. Right. Because the perception is he's going to Georgia. So everybody. <laughs> but not, <stop>, man. <laughs> there goes another one. <laughs> No, I hear you. And that's, look, that's why I said just chill out. See, look what happened with Joe Phillips. The day before he commits, Aubrey swooped in and bought the shit out of him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> chill out. Oh, boy. Again, those two, right? They, right there and of themselves, that changes the dynamic of your class because now you're talking about two top end pieces of your class. I mean, look, Tavares Dice has so it has sort of a lot of people's boards. I mean, yeah. Florida State, Miami, Florida, Missouri. These are all teams that Auburn competes against on a year-in, year-out basis. Now, maybe Missouri doesn't recruit in the top half like those other teams that I just mentioned, but Miami's had two back-to-back -back top five classes underneath Mario Cristobal. Florida has recruited well underneath Napier. Now, they haven't played well, but they've recruited well. And Florida State underneath Mike Norvell, he evals and does a phenomenal job with offensive line targets. So – that is a guy that you absolutely want in this class. And then Eric Winters, is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? I have no idea. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you. He's athletic enough to play either position, and I don't think it matters. If Auburn decides that they absolutely want him, I don't think Hugh Freeze is going to get denied on that one. He, he, he's, he's wherever he wants to play until you get him on campus. 
There you yeah. go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's what position <laughs> Auburn's recruiting him to play. Whatever Which, position he wants. If you I, look at it's very funny. You make the comparison to Joe Phillips. You look at him. I mean, he was, you know, edge. Then he was linebacker. Right. Now he's he is we I mean, he is one of the bucks out there right now. At is he? Yeah, he's a buck. And Cole and I, I can remember us talking about it on the show, saying, Hey, I mean, I think he's a natural edge. I, th- I just think he's gonna yeah. play on the outside. And then I remember Cole reporting, well, no, they're, they're telling him linebacker. I was like, man, I just well, – I don't <laughs> – That's what he said, you yeah. know. Right, exactly. You know. Maybe um, what he wanted to hear. Sure. I'm sure part of it, there's there a little gamesmanship in there. Wasn't it Carlos Dance, but they told him he could play wide receiver. Wide too. receiver, big dog. The moment you step on campus. <laughs> and he played the first hey, man. practice. <laughs> Defense is over there, big dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got the wrong hey, you, jersey on. Hey, you on the wrong field, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Grab you that blue jersey and head on over there. Yep. <laughs> oh, Jack O'Lantern 11. Uh, over under on March commitments. I think we set the over under at two and a half. And, and we I took would. the under. Yeah, we took the under. I stayed with that. I mean, I, I took it over. But Devin Williams, man, if you'd have just waited a couple more days, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he I'll, couldn't stand it. <laughs> uh, I, I would now if we're going to do March and April, I might take the over. I might go three in those two months. I'm still on the under right now, just because I don't know who else is going to announce. Like right now, to me, in April, it's going to be winners and it's going to be dice, and I don't know who else. Like that's. I'm unsure beyond those two. Yeah. Something just, tells me Dice could still end up doing it in March if certain things happen. Uh, Zealous Hicks told me he was going to do it in March, and I have a prediction in for him to go to Auburn right now. We're monitoring that one. You know, we'll yeah, see. I forgot about 2026. I forgot about that. Um, Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of look, – look, that's a five-star – a potential five-star player there. You got to well, count another that. Another thing, nobody expected Derek Nix to commit when he did. Nobody expected Antonio Coleman to flip when he did. Derek Smith? Yeah. Did I say that? You said Derek Nix. <laughs> 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 that's what I said, man. If D Nix is lining up for us, brother, we that's a that's a understandable slip. Oh, by the yeah. way, how about Bo Jackson? Yes. Yes. Bo Jackson. I'm, try, I'm trying to get him, man. I, I Me wanted too. To, uh, to talk to him and uh, he's just Everybody, oh, he's going to Ohio State. Well, it might be, but still, it'll be an interesting story. I'd like to talk oh, to yeah. him. Oh, yeah. I want to see what he says about it. Yeah. Uh, oh, Johnny Utah. Oh, Keanu. <laughs> Cole, do you know Johnny Utah? We've talked about this. Okay. What, what's the movie? Point Isn't Break. One of your favorites. Point Alan? Break, baby. Yeah. I, I was about to say, yeah. I am an FBI agent. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he can sling it. I still haven't watched that one yet. I got to watch that. He was you Uncle think? Rico before Uncle Rico was Uncle Rico. No doubt. Is it, a, is it what? I don't know anything about the movie. I, I'm just going to say it. I think what is uh, the movie about? Is in it? Is so it a sport it's, movie? It's a surf so it, gang. Okay, yes. Yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's a surf it, it's, it's a surf crew that's Robin Banks. And they're okay. Robin Banks is dead presidents. Keanu Reeves. Oh, okay. And, I was undercover. Uh, Gary Busey, our FBI agents that are tracking these guys. Gary now. Busey, too, huh? Oh, yeah, dude. I have to crazy, ass, crazy ass Gary Busey. Zach's telling us to shut up and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance Landon Rink uh, visits the spring in your opinion? Where do you think he sits on our board? You know, he wasn't in my top five, but he would have probably been six, seven. Um, right, 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 tier two, top of the tier two. He's a big defensive lineman from Texas. Auburn offered him, I think, in February. Yep. And, um, I talked to him. I had a story on him. He was very interested. And yeah, you, he's got a visit. Um, has he already set the date? I don't remember. Let me, let me, let me, let me look real quick. I don't think we have it in the. Is all recruiting him as an end or is he being recruited in April? April visit. April visit. Okay. You know what? I, I, you might be right, uh, Alan. He might be a five guy if that's I, if. I think he's a five. I mean, I, th- I think he's a five or a six, probably on the strong side there. Uh, I've never been to Auburn. I definitely want to go. I think I might be able to go for the spring game on April the 6th. Okay. One of my favorite players of all time is Cam Newton, so I know a little bit about Auburn. Uh, you know, uh, Deuce Geralds was also supposed to visit for the spring game. I wonder if he's going to make two visits. That would be interesting. Let me ring. Uh, let's see. Good stuff. Uh, Johnny Utah. AU Tigers 7, not to be confused with AU Tigers 07. Uh, if you could pick one state of Alabama, recruit, 
Uh, okay, if you could pick a state of Alabama recruit that is not currently on the Auburn radar, similar to Bryce Kane, that will gain momentum and sign. And what, a month ago, I bet you some of you, both of you might have said uh, TK Metcalf. I mean, JK Norman. <laughs> TC Norman. TC, TK Norman. Terrence Norman. Tristan TK Norman. That's what he had me down on that one. He could have missed it more time. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> oh, I'm down on that one. I okay. was thinking, well, I tell you what, I, it was the Laramie Tonsil thing that we were talking about earlier, LT, that was throwing me off too. Um, let's see. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. Oh, Larry, oh Lawrence Taylor. Terrell. Oh, uh, Taylor. Uh, let's see. Go back up, Zach. Let me scroll back up. I got one. I'm going to go with A.J. Rice, hmm. linebacker, Madison, Alabama, I think. Yep. From Let me Madison, see 10 through Alabama. 20. Academy. Let's see 10 through 20, Zach. Give me Andrew Purcell from Enterprise. Oh, that's a good one. All right, Man, keep scroll. Scroll. But yeah, make that times two for me because I think that kid is in, there's, up in this There's class. Andrew right there. Andrew's number okay. 20. That guy's okay. good. That guy's good. I, I don't – I don't know if he's going to be a take guy for Auburn at, at any point. I think he could be, though. Hey, hey, Alan, there's your boy, Taleb Graham. Yep. He was good him? at the Armour camp. How about him? I think he's worth looking into because you, you're taking two edges in this class. Okay. So, if if it all depends, man. I mean, they've got some lofty aspirations on that buck board right now, and you may end up seeing a guy like him skyrocket uh, he, and Cole was right. He was it, all reports where he he really played well at the Under Armour camp. That he he's, did. Okay. he's a little bit maybe you know sawed off is the term I've heard you several times for a guy that's think of uh, you know a TD Moultrie, a guy that was maybe a little bit undersized for what he was playing, but you know look it doesn't matter if you're if you're good you're good i think jamonte waller's proving that right now because he's a little bit sawed off smaller not as lengthy guy tall guy that's what to leave graham is but he's he's kind of twitchy I, I liked what i saw from him so he he's probably going to rise up a few boards i don't know if he's an auburn guy yet we'll have to see on that but i i think that andrew purcell is is a very high potential auburn guy Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and look at the cornerback board right now. Uh, Chris Ewald, I, I think they're very high on him. How does that situation play itself out? Obviously, you've got the young man at Parker that we're going to continue to recruit. But yeah, can Timothy you flip Merritt. him? Yeah, can you flip him from – Oh, no, I'm well, sorry. Name offered. Yeah, can you flip offered from um, Ohio State? And if not, then you've got Andrew Purcell sitting there. And he's a guy that's yeah. got SEC offers that's being recruited by other SEC schools and that a lot of people have gone by and seen as, as far as an evaluation period goes and thought, hey, hey, we like this kid. What if you were able to grab three guys from Enterprise High School? Ooh. Eric Winters, Andrew Purcell, Zion Grady. Who's something, the last tells me, something tells me that if they want both of those guys – they will start to recruit Andrew Purcell more too. Make Last it hard to understand. sign with Auburn out of Enterprise. <sighs> to some, oh, that's going to be Raven Gray. Raven Gray went to Enterprise. Yeah, before he started robbing liquor stores. Was, yeah, he, I saw was that. Raven Gray was he a JUCO when he committed and signed to Auburn? Okay, I think he went to the Gulf Coast or um, he was a Mississippi. Uh, he was awesome. He was an awesome kid, dude. I love Raven Gray. Yep. I, I, I know people take different roads in life, but that kid coming out of high school was very polite, well mannered, and um, treated me very well. No, Zach, kid, just, we all go down different routes. Different sure. routes, right, Jeffrey? Zach brings Zach. up an interesting name. Um, a guy that I, I talked to in person last year when I went to Mobile Christian, talked to Sterling Dixon. This guy's big. He's he can move. He's from Canada, um, and he played running back in Canadian football for a little while. Floyd Bucard is how you say his name. He he is now at Miami Central, but that guy is blowing up right now. Okay. Auburn might get in there on that one. Okay, okay. Floyd Bucard. Bucard. <laughs> Josh uh, Cribbett. 
who's the former Auburn DB that y'all would compare to Antonio Kite? Uh, Kite's rangy, man. Um, maybe from a body type standpoint, like a Carlos Rogers type. Now, I don't know if he's going to have that kind of a skill set, but if I'm just because I don't, I haven't seen what he looks like on tape in my defense. Like I, I didn't pay attention a ton to Alabama's too deep last year. Like if you weren't in the starting rotation, I, I really wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. And I know he got some snaps, but if I'm just looking at him from a body type standpoint, he's got a little bit of a slender athletic build. Probably uh, he's what about six one Cole. Yeah, he's he's. I saw him walk through um, the lobby the other day. He's a big guy. He's not yeah. he's not a small guy at all. Got some size on him. Yeah, maybe Nico Thorpe, something I like was just that. Thinking Nico Thorpe, but I was off. I almost wanted to not say that because you know. Nico yeah. Lipscomb. Yeah. I, honestly, you know who it's? It's a safety. He has more of a safety's body to me. And he said the question says DB. So Stephen Roberts came to mind. It, okay. It, he's a little bigger than Steven was, but the style of play might be similar. What did so, Kevin still used to call him skinny pimp? Was that what it was? Ghost boy, right? <laughs> was his Twitter name or something like that? I feel like Kevin still used to call him skinny pimp. That was the that was his yeah. nickname that they gave him. That might be right. I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to think of a big corner Auburn's had that's not Carlton Davis or Jamel Dean. Have they had another one? Monte Pitts. Monte was taller. He was probably what six six foot six foot one. Oh, he was taller than that. You think he was taller than that? Oh, I think he was six two. Carlos Rogers was six one. Uh, Rudy Ford was six foot. Who else was a taller corner that they've had, Jeffrey? T Bell was what five eleven ish. Monte was listed at six one, so he was probably six feet. So you probably Gerard right. Powers wasn't a big guy, was he? No, nah, he's like five nine. Jonathan and Jones not big. Roger McCreary not big. Nope. Monte was just so <sighs> so athletic, man. So oh, he yeah. was fantastic. He just athletic looked taller out there. Maybe he had a long neck or something. Well, he was long. Period. Long yeah. arms. Yeah. What about uh, David Irons? What was his size? Five nine. Uh, five ten. Five ten. He's Boy, 15, you, 5, 11. you couldn't tell him that though, man. David thought he was like six foot two. <laughs> He's one of my favorite players of all time. Auburn, him Auburn seems to get smaller corners that have a just bad intentions playing football. Guys that are I'll, just awesome football players that are smaller guys. I'll tell you one that uh, that didn't pan out. He ended up transferring out. Jonathan Rose was oh, a yeah. uh, was a, was a bigger corner from Leeds, Leeds Alabama. Right? Yep. Yeah. Where I, was David that, and Kenny from? That's sort of the thing with Antonio Kite. He's he's different. I mean, he's the yes. kind of guy that he's the kind of guy that Alabama's been getting. Point blank. That Auburn yeah. has not. Right. No, he's was, I mean, the NFL bodied cornerbacks. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Very lengthy, very long, good speed, good hips, uh, extremely athletic. I mean, I don't know if you guys watched his basketball highlights when he was getting oh, ready to yeah. come out, but very bouncy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's see what old deal holds up to. How important do you think NIL is in comparison to all the other factors? Uh, uh, for example, on the field success, playing time, location, players in the league, et cetera. Is it 50 50 NIL and everything else? Well, it's it's different with every guy. You need to know that off the bat sure. because I I don't know if I want to go specific here, but I didn't meet a guy that is not interested in NIL. He's big time recruit, and he don't care about NIL. That is not in his, you know, big things. It's not in there. So it's different with every guy. I think it's, but let's I do. Say you, think let's it, say you pulled the top two hundred fifty players in the country. Take sure. the on three industry ranking top two fifty, and you ask them a question: How important is NIL? Here's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 90 percent. What do you think the major? What do you think the average would be of how important NIL is in their recruitment? If they're being honest, yeah. Because there's the other thing. Sometimes when kid, you know, and people in general, right, like sure. if, some, if somebody asked me what was this the was most anonymous, this was an anonymous survey. Exactly. If it's an anonymous survey and they're giving honest answers, I think NIL is probably number one. I think it was. 
NFL development is probably number two, if I'm being honest, because yeah. there are a lot of kids that have amb- have aspirations and ambitions of playing well beyond college football. So schools that have put a large number of kids at their position into the league, I think that's probably number two. Here's the interesting thing about NIL. I, if you do, if you did that poll, there's probably, let's say you did what was the number y'all said, 250 guys. Mm-hmm. I bet you 10 would say that would pick something other than NIL, but then when they're presented with the money, it's different. Well, it's always right. It's so, easy. To, it's hard to say, but I would say NIL rules. All right. Well, think about it in our lives, right? <laughs> It's easy for you, me, and everybody else to say, ah, I'm I'm not about the money. Sure. And then somebody somebody offers you six figures and they yeah. put it in front of you. Now, are you saying the same thing? Or are you saying, eh, I'm gonna take the check? <laughs> yeah. Here's, <laughs> the way I was, here's the way I was looking at it. If you had hundred percent of your decision, I think 40 of it would be NIL, 30 of it would be development to the NFL. You know, 20 would be relationships with the coaches. 10 would be uh, proximity to home, you know, all that asset. But as you said, bottom line is, number one, NIL. If you can't get past that, you're probably not going to get to two, three, or four. Right. And maybe even relationships over NFL development. You know, that that's one that's a huge piece of it. Yeah, Yeah, I think those are interchangeable pieces. The relational aspect is something that has not changed in college. I, I completely agree. I think people have thrown that out the window. I don't think that's true. I think relationships are very important. All things, yeah, all, all that, all things equal with NIL. If you know, if these six schools have offered you the same NIL, you're going to where you feel most comfortable. The relationships are the best. I even think relationships get you a discount in NIL. I firmly believe that. I, I think good recruiters and good relationships yeah. get you a discount in NIL. Yeah, I hear you. It's not going to take that much, Coach, because I, I like that. You. That is confirmed to be true. Right. It happened last year. It 100% happened last year. It happened at Auburn. It happened at other places that I, I mean, I'm telling you, I can confirm it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that I've, I've heard the same thing. So it's, I think the relational aspect and then the NFL development, I probably got ahead of myself. I, I forget about that, but it, that's a huge piece that we need to continue to talk about is the relational aspect of recruiting. You could almost do 40% NIL, 25 or 30% relationships, 25%. Yep development and then fill in the rest with you know play in time and major all that right other shit, you know what proximity I mean? to home the, the BS. <laughs> he said all that other major school you know that stuff yeah, that thing, yeah. You know, academic <laughs> shit <laughs> look i will tell you this i was talking to somebody the other day that, that does this for a living they, they're in the, the the recruiting world and they said look man when you have an official visit or an unofficial visit we have like a checklist and you don't take a kid on an academic visit more than once. You let them, you take them over there so they know what it is. And you take mom and dad back a couple of times. We, sure. we only, we only take them over there one time or you're going to lose that kid. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, <laughs> let's let D Cone round us off, finish this up tonight. Uh, if you had to put in an RPM for AJ, AJ DeBonza. DeBonza. Hey, look at you. Yes. That's, that's exactly how he says it too, man. I've been wow. practicing on that one. His father taught me that. Oh, did he? He said, the T, throw it away. Throw out the, the, the T, throw away. No good. Debonsa. I said, okay, big dog, I got you. Uh, if I had to put in an RPM for right now, I, I know he's visited Auburn. I know he's visited USC. USC. But, I mean, right now, I think the field would be the easy choice for me. Yeah, he's going to visit Kentucky, I believe. Kentucky, North Carolina. I mean, all the big dogs are coming after this kid. So right now, I mean, just just I think that was, that would be the easy pick would be the field, not Auburn right now. But you know, ask me again, and he's in no hurry. By the way, this kid, he's still it's still a long way off. He's yeah. not. I don't think he's planning on signing. If he does, it'll be in November. He's got a lot of visits to take before then. I think the early period is in November. So. Uh, right now, the field, but they liked it at Auburn. They really did. Ira Bowman's done a good job here with this oh, kid. Oh, man, he's fantastic. And that apparel deal does not matter, but it sure would help. <laughs> right. Um, all right, let's uh, let's let's knock out some how bad you is. You, you want to jump in there, Alan? 
No, I, I, I think everything that you said as far as the bands it goes is, is 100%, man. Uh, it's wide open, but I did want to make sure I threw Ira's name out there because I, I have heard he's done a fantastic job in this he's recruitment. Such a good, he's such a good recruiter. He is. And, of course, this kid's originally from the Northeast. I think he's from Boston or someplace in Massachusetts. Let me think. Oh, I don't think Baltimore, it's, is it? No, it's not Baltimore. It's someplace in Massachusetts. It's not Boston, okay. though. But any which way, that's Ira's territory. He's his own buster yeah. up in the Northeast. New now. Jersey, awesome. Philadelphia, he's awesome. Yes. yes, but it, I don't think Ira gets enough love sometimes for some of the work that he puts in. So Needham, I Needham, Massachusetts, according okay. to Zach in the back. There you go. Uh, Zach, yes, we did say Nico Thorpe. We said Nico Lipscomb Thorpe. For, all the, for, all, the, for all the OGs. Yes, he was tall. He was 6'2". Um, okay, how about you? How about you? How about you? Anybody, how about you? Let's see. I have two. Yeah, I got I'm going to give one today. It's going to be Ashley Schaefer. All right. <laughs> I'm going to give you some love, Ashley Schaefer. You can feel it under your plums. Yes. <laughs> it's got a blue hue. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually started the thread that said that uh, I need to change my name back to J-Head. Because the recruiting momentum has gone sideways since I've come out as Allen. <laughs> it really has, man. Hey, you know what? He's not lying. Facts are facts, right? <laughs> but I'm don't, not changing my name, bro. Don't do it. Right. Don't do it. Hold hold strong. Yep. Hold. Uh, <laughs> check all right. check Mr. your tone, girl. <laughs> Miss uh Mr. Mr. Emily. Ha. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's mr swifty that's one oh. <laughs> that, that's good <laughs> yeah all right yeah i got three uh right. i can't remember if i gave him one on the last show so he's gonna get one again be one tiger I be dog i got you big dog uh who you say be one tiger you do not you do not give well, him one he's getting one d as in delta or b as no, in bravo boy like b as in boy bravo B one tiger, all one word. Is that a numeral? Um, I don't know. Is the number one, or is it B? Yes, B number one. B number one. I guess that if it was B O N E, it would be bone tiger. <laughs> <laughs> it is B the number one tiger, all one word. All right. All right. Um, lightning. He won the lightning. How, how do you spell lightning? Just like I'm saying it, lightning. L I G H T N I N. <laughs> Is that like McConaughey living? L I V I N. Yeah. L I G H T I N. Yeah, living. Oh, N I N. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. He like he this. was again. I I like to go for voices of reason. Um, I felt like he was that last Friday when Tavares Dice was on with Dukes and talked about other schools that were in the mix trying to knock Auburn off. He came in and said, "Look." You know, obviously, we're doing a good job of evaluating. Auburn was in on this guy pretty early. Hmm. Voice of reason, if you ask me. My goodness. Hey, how about lightning times two for me? I mean, voices of reason this day and age? Cha-ching. There you go. <laughs> and then uh, last one is WDE Mike, and that's all one word as well. W-D-E-M-I-K-E. Yeah. Oh. He's the one that started a great topic, in my opinion, on the board. Uh, who was the, who's your overrated music? artist like who's an artist that everybody seems to like but you're like man i don't like them mm. my answer uh my answer was i had two it was you two well, I, I can't stand you two okay. bono not a bono fan i got no, it. Never been a fan. i like bon jovi but i don't think that bon jovi is as great as they get this you know they have a couple good songs living on the prayer is obviously awesome but they're just not like that great rock band to me that they Listen, seem to be. If I don't ever hear that stupid song at a football, all the football game again, <laughs> and these stupid people are chanting, "Hey, we're living in a prayer. Yeah, we're not any good. We're hoping we're praying to God. We're any, yeah, whatever, dude. That's the dumbest." <laughs> I would, uh, I would like to know y'all's picks on this. If y'all want to think about it, or if you know, um, Garth Brooks seemed to be a very popular pick on that thread. See, he I like. He can't like mind. Brooks. 
But I will say this, dude. I saw every country music artist of the 90s in concert several times. Best performance, best concert, best entertainment I've ever witnessed was Garth Brooks on stage, and he tore it up. <laughs> I bet. Luke. Listen, man, when I had a little too much to drink, Friends in Low Places, all-time favorite song to have to ride home from the bar to. Oh, are you kidding me? Now, now as, as I'm older now, I didn't care about what he did off the stage back then or how he was sure. perceived. Sure. Now, I, I get it. People yeah. don't like him, so therefore they don't like his music or they think he's a sellout and they think he's this. I get that. Uh, but... Listen, he's he got he's got he's got good music. He was the country music artist of the year, maybe probably even the decade of the nineties. Yeah, yeah exactly. although I'd I'd let I'd rather hear Aaron Tippin any time. Oh, <laughs> you got to stand for something. Stand for something, or you'll bow for anything. You know what I'm <laughs> I got two. Um, I'm a huge rap guy, and I just I cannot get into Drake. Just can't, man. Just hmm. not a Drake guy. Yeah, I don't really like him either, personally. Okay, I'm not I don't even know guy. what his music are, but who is this uh, Machine Gun Kelly guy? What in the world is that? What the hell is even that? That's what I look at when I see that guy. What the? And then his chick, he's got some Megan Fox, I think. Is that his, who, is that who he's with? Yeah, Megan I think Fox. so. This guy is ugly. I could whoop his ass. He is he is, he is a stick man. I don't, is he a rapper? Yeah, man. I today he is a dude, rapper. I might as well be an old geezer when it comes to today's music. I'm I'm not in. I'm not not in. in. That mm. dude is a rapper. Some I, I mean, mean, there's some things, but I, I is most of it. Anything that's popular, <laughs> I'm usually not. Back in the back, said he was a rapper until Eminem made, made him switch to rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, and then. uh I'm gonna be honest with you on the country music scene, just not a Kenny Chesney guy, man. Mm. Uh, he's a he's an acquired. I mean, you know, I mean, he's got some good songs, dude, but just overall, just not a Kenny Chesney guy. You don't man. like the the tropical music thing he does? Is that mm, just not feeling it, man? Boy, my wife is the biggest Kenny Chesney fan, and Jimmy Buffett. That whole like, you know. Gulf and Western movement, I guess, is what you would call it. Yeah, yeah. The the paradise, the parrot. Yeah. Parrot head. Parrot head. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My Uncle Jimmy's a parrot hand. <laughs> uh, all right. I got a couple. Let me see here. Uh, how about you to O'Shane, who called in Sunday night, CCR3. How about you, B-Dog? Cole, uh, you missed it, man. CCR3 called in, gave us a big... Uh, he gave us a big how about you, to be honest with you. He loves yeah. the site. Thought we were doing fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Uh, been a member. Seen the evolution of the message board. Thinks it's fantastic and really appreciates everything. And uh, we certainly appreciate Good. it. Oh, Shawnee. Shawnee from Dothan, I think. CCR3. How about you, big dog? And then how about you to Auburn Tiger Claws? Sent me uh, some, something very similar, man. Sent me a message and uh, really enjoys the site. Appreciates everything we do. And uh, we obviously appreciate everything he does and all of our uh, subscribers, except for about 10 of them. <laughs> <laughs> who will remain nameless. There yeah. you go. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and they're laughing. They're laughing yeah. as they're hearing this. I promise. <laughs> oh, my God. I got my eye on you. Um, all right. Let's wrap it up. We're going to uh, y'all lock into Auburn Live on three if you haven't already. We're going to be uh, got visitors Thursday. Probably going to have a one or two show up uh, at some point Friday, and then Saturday is going to be loaded, loaded. If you haven't already, we've got the visit list confirmed. Uh, we're going to be adding adding to that again. Um, I know of at least three guys that are expected to be at Auburn on Saturday that are not on the list, and uh, we'll see what happens with them. And they would be big. It would be a, they're definitely be headline grabbers. We'll uh, we'll see what we have there. One more time, if you're in Auburn, Opelika, Lee County, looking for a realtor, we got her. Her uh, name is Jessica Andrus. She's with the Talents Group. Give her a call, 334-704-4440. She is the, the five-star realtor of the Auburn, Opelika area. All right, folks, that's what we're going to cut it off, and we'll be back Sunday night for the call-in show. Y'all join us back here, 630 Central Time. And uh, on our YouTube channel, if you haven't already subscribed to that YouTube channel, uh, somebody was asking about the replay of the call-in show. Hey, well, if you subscribe to our 
our YouTube channel and you hit those notifications, you know every time a video gets uploaded and you can watch it and listen to it right then and there. Uh, so meet us back Sunday night. We'll be looking forward to it. Appreciate everybody listening. Appreciate everybody watching. For Alan Head, for Cole Pinkston, for Zach in the back, who stayed in the back? I'm Jeffrey <laughs> Lee, man. Y'all stay out of that left lane. See ya.